Hello. So we'd like to talk to you about what we've been working on, but we'd like to start with a, a few numbers. First, the basics. One in three people will get cancer in the US in their lifetime, and many of them are young, like our age. And we also know that for each of the 15 million people right now in this country who have cancer, there are, are just as many who already have and survived. And that number of survivors is rising really fast, and that's actually who we'd like to talk with you about today. So with a one in three chance, we'd like you to imagine that it happens to you, and one day your doctor tells you, you have cancer. So you imagine immediately wanting to live, of course, but what's next? How do you talk about this with people? Imagine worrying that you'll be fired from the job that now you really need, or the shock of some of your friends, your closest friends, suddenly disappearing, some of your family treating you as if you're contagious or as if you're broken, being told by experts to keep this whole cancer thing a secret, going through all that and more, and then at the end of treatment, finding that it worked and that you have no more cancer. And is any of that as shocking as this? But virtually every survivor, and we checked again and again, told us that this is true, that often experiencing survival can be worse than the experience that they had in treatment. Why? Working with around 50 people over the last year, a story took shape for us that contradicted some of our assumptions and made us wonder why there's so little support for people who have survived cancer. And when we asked what the problems were, survivors insisted every time that every cancer journey is different, and that's true. But for designers, everybody's different can be really tough to design for. So uh, we wanted to go back to the basics with these group of people and understand better where we might find some of their shared unmet needs that we could address. So if your life is pretty stable before cancer, cancer is like a collision that leaves your life in pieces. And even as we get really, really good at getting rid of that cancer after it's there, your life is still in pieces. Having been treated at 23 for breast cancer, Jessica told us that the moment that she felt most shocked, worried, anxious, down, wasn't during treatment, it was after treatment was over, that she felt unprepared, especially for the fact that that was when she would lose her job because of the cancer that she no longer had. And we also find that cancer survival often comes with a lot of serious and surprising side effects that impact everything, that impact your ability to do your work or your prospects for getting work at all. So when we asked a vice president of HR how people are coping, she told us that there is no tolerance right now for different ways of working. She said that negotiating law and policy was really difficult and when survivors don't do it just right, that they can be fired and had been in her workplace. And that when she tried to bend those rules in order to help them, she actually landed in court. So in the workplace, we find that getting and giving help is really, really difficult and risky for both survivors and the people who want to help them. And your social support, on top of that, scatters generally, too. Every single survivor says that by the time they'd finished treatment, some of their closest friends and family don't even text anymore. And that's not just a nice to have. Lack of social support is so real a problem that it actually increases mortality for anyone. Some studies show that social isolation can as much as triple your risk of death. So survivors, survivors excuse me, need social support more than ever, but instead they're losing it. And so this is when we actually located that shared need. If cancer leaves your life in pieces, scarce social support seems to consistently keep it that way. So what helps connect survivors with support that they can trust to advocate for their lives beyond cancer? What does it look like to have space to rebuild and to be yourself? It turns out, counterintuitively, other survivors do. Megan, who's a 20-something survivor, told us that connecting with other survivors was a life-changing thing that she discovered because they just get it. Uh, you connect with them no matter what their cancer was, no matter what their treatment was, like you connect with nobody else. They show up and support without fear, without threat, without condition. And survivors, it should be said, hold so much collective knowledge and understanding about dealing with life beyond cancer that we really ought to be handing out honorary degrees as they come out of hospitals. So we worked with an organization called Sharing and Caring in Queens, without whom much of this work would have been impossible. And they're an incredible nonprofit who's been working with survivors and with patients for 24 years. And while working with them, we found that they were able to build trust, 
to create confidence, to meet needs among survivors in amazing ways that we had seen almost nowhere else. And they did it, often by being survivor to survivor. But this kind of survivor to survivor support hasn't really been scaled. And it's weird to use the word scale here, but it's true. For a lot of survivors across the country, these connections to social sharing and ongoing support can still be really difficult to find or facilitate. So what if we centered support on survivors by connecting them with others like them first, and then together to the people who have resources that they need and can use to thrive? Our early designs focused on the majority of users who we found at one point or another are all going online to find information about their health, as we all do. But when you decouple that information at that point in their lives from social support, it gets really, really scary and potentially damaging. Uh, Online, social support, if you're like us, the word Facebook is about to pop into your head. Um, and so we looked at Facebook groups, whether they're already being used or whether we should be. Uh, and it's not super hip to talk about Facebook right now and why we should be joining it, but uh, we still thought it was worth checking out because a lot of us are still there. And uh, yeah, we found some things out about that though. First, survivors who joined great support groups on Facebook, and some of them were really great, also end up with a Facebook, Facebook news feed takeover, turning their Facebook into a place that is entirely about their cancer and therefore sometimes kind of depressing. Um, they lose the functionality that we all more or less enjoy from a normal Facebook. Um, second, privacy really is a concern for a lot of these survivors, and fear of disclosure is a thing that hangs around, and as we've seen, sometimes rightly so. And third, news feeds are actually pretty ephemeral. Um, and for a survivor, that's a problem because they can create great answers to shared problems that then can't really be found tomorrow. We also found that the impact of cancer more broadly affects people's lives than a lot of services have yet started to address. It really does go everywhere and impact everything at one point or another. So now we're asking, how can we build a space to be real without fear, to access knowledge and support, and to get expert insight when you need it, all to build a new normal that you can get back to? So we designed Headway that creates sources of knowledge social support, and self-efficacy through connections with other survivors. Headway is a collaborative guide for cancer survivors. So Headway supports users in three features. Beacons for exchanging short messages through quick ideas, rants, and challenges. Guides where survivors and experts can use Headway's prompts to build a collaborative guide to their most pressing challenges and caravans where survivors can search for and connect with support groups in their area. So let's say you're the survivor. You hear about Headway through a nurse, a social worker, your HR representative, a doctor, or even another survivor. So you download the app and get the quick tour of the features. The first thing you find in Headway is its beacons. So Beacons is where survivors post and exchange quick messages with all survivors and where anyone can pitch in to respond. So in moments that you're sad or stuck or need a place to rant, you can pick the quick category in Beacons and get a perspective from people that you can trust. So the alert that you posted then shows up in Headway's community. Then survivors can respond with insight and affirmation. You might think that this isn't much, but what you just read happened in our tests. And to a lot of survivors we asked, including the sender and the recipient, the ki this kind of exchange had a real impact. It's a light touch, but a high impact interaction. Next, you come to guides, where you can find answers to the range of challenges you experience, created with survivors and experts who understand. As a survivor, you have needs and challenges, and you really want to communicate. Headway facilitates that communication by providing an easy starting point for their story. With prompts based on real posts by other survivors, you can build a guide to your life in survivorship. When you find a prompt with a challenge you have, you can browse other survivors' answers and save the responses that help. Plus, Headway includes a wide range of experts who, can, who are willing to volunteer their time to address these concerns. And survivors help each other connect with support and advice that they need. Finally, you arrive at Caravans, Headway's third feature. It's how survivors find support groups in their area. 
you don't want a life in survivorship to just be online, so you use Caravans to search a support group around you. You can check the locations, group types, and times. But if you don't find one that works for you or suits you, you can quickly create your own group and invite survivors to join in. So when, when, when a minimum number of survivors is met, survivors are notified and connected with each other. You can find and create new resources of local support without fear of showing up in an empty room. So Headway is a place to express, ask, explore each other's, and connect locally. It makes sure that your stories add up to something that helps you and others like you, so that your concerns aren't actually getting pushed down a news feed. So, and the dozens of survivors that we spoke to, including healthcare professionals, employers, and community organizations we've worked with, said they love this. In fact, we sent a link to our first prototype to just four survivors, and within 24 hours, we got responses from 30 survivors we'd never met. They said how they loved how conversational it was, and how easy they found to take part in, story after story, post after post. They love the Headway's resources are fit to their challenges and address barriers they experience. And they value getting to check in with experts' insights on the topics they choose while building the support for each other. We know that we can't always make surviving cancer easy, but we think about making accessing the needed social support in life beyond cancer a little less hard. So we hope that Headway is the very first step in seeding in this incredible ecosystem that helps connect survivors with the support they need in order to thrive in lives beyond cancer. Thank you, everybody, for taking such a long time <laughs> in listening to us. And we especially want to thank everyone who's led us here and made us come this far. Thank you. Thank you.